from Madison Square Garden in New York. It's the South Carolina Gamecocks out of the SEC taking on the Temple Owls from the American Conference. Along with Brooke Weisbrot, I'm Doug Sherman. Paul Carcatero will join us shortly. This Owls team has quite a one, two, three punch. Shiz Alston Jr., Quinton Rose, and Obi Anechionia. They will provide a tremendous challenge tonight, Brooke, for the Gamecocks. Alston Jr. is big shot ready. This guy is ready to step in and do what needs to be done on offense. Then you got this 6'8 Rose out there on the wing presenting all kinds of problems coming off a season high 21 points against LaSalle and Obi Echinonia. I'm telling you, this guy on the inside, a thousand point scorer, wants the ball on the inside, and they're balanced. This Temple Owls team is a handful to deal with. Temple comes in with a record of 3-1 and one overall. They won the Charleston Classic Championship a week ago and then suffered a loss their last time out Sunday against Big Five rival LaSalle, 87-83. The Gamecocks, meanwhile, are 5-1, and one, coming off a win Monday at FIU where they uh, won 78-61. At that man's alma mater, Frank Martin, now in his sixth year as head coach of the Gamecocks. He says, coaching is not X's and O's, it's connecting with people. No doubt. You've got two coaches here who really believe in connecting with people and making an impact in the program. Yes, there is Professor Fran Dunphy in his 12th year as head coach at Temple. He is a Big Five legend, 1970 graduate of LaSalle University. He actually was a standout point guard for the Explorers back in the 60s, averaged 18.6 points per game for Tom Gola. And we are underway in the Under Armour reunion at MSG. Gamecocks start Hassani Gravit with the basketball. He's the point guard along with Frank Booker, Justin Manaya, Chris Silva, and Mike Kotsar. This is Kotsar, the 6'10 sophomore from Estonia. Silva gets his shot blocked, and the Owls have it for the first time. Defense is the name of the game for both of these clubs. You know, Temple, also known as a terrific three-point shooting team. But the defense of South Carolina is so suffocating. Something Fran Dunphy said in the beginning, in the first four minutes, if we can get some backdoor looks to try to open up our outside game, that's what I want to see. Cross-court pass to Rose. He's short on the three. Then the steal. Quinton Rose, the sophomore from Rochester, New York, has the Owls on the board first. It's good heads-up play. You know, a lot of times guys win down the ball and you're looking back, you don't realize who's behind you, but that's a good heads up play, 6-8 with the wide wingspan to get the deflection and the score. The Gamecocks are considered the road team in this neutral site matchup, wearing their black uniforms. The Owls out of the American wearing their whites. That's a triple by Gravit. Long rebound comes back to Booker. He's the most lethal three-point shooter for the Gamecocks. Now he goes to the bucket off the nice feed from Kotsar. South Carolina is going to have to be big on controlling the basketball, especially around the glass. And they've gone a lot inside this season. I mean, Sandarius Thornwell, hey, he's no longer on the team, all right? So he was your high volume shooter. And South Carolina has the strength on the inside. Certainly, Coates are with that offensive rebound. And Chris Silva, their big guy, number 30 in the paint right now. And Silva's second team all SEC preseason. You mentioned Sandarius Thornwell, one of three starters off of that final four team a year ago to move on, and Thornwell's in the NBA with the LA Clippers, so still early in the season, the Gamecocks still figuring things out. I think you could say that really about every team at this point, and Temple, in just four games on the season, they were the last NCAA team to even play a game. And they're coming off that loss against LaSalle. They were up 11, and scoring on nine of 10 possessions at one point to build that lead in the second half, but not to about a minute left. His lights out with Sal closed the game out. Fran Duffy not happy. Silva lost it out of bounds. Back to Temple. And there's the uh, the big three that the Gamecocks are trying to replace. P.J. Dozier's on a two-way NBA contract with Oklahoma City. And, of course, Dwayne noticed the other double-figure score off of that historic Gamecocks team. Shiz Alston. No good off the window. And that's Ernest of Flakpe on the offensive glass. And the little runner off the window by Rose and another steal this time by Brown. 
Wide open three. It's a little strong. And South Carolina's got it. You know, Brooke, we uh, we talk about the big three for Temple, Alston Rose, and Inechi Onya, but it wouldn't be fair if we don't also include their fifth-year senior co-captain guard, Josh Brown, who really gets everybody in the right place. You talk about a coach being on the floor. I mean, he's been here. He's now a redshirt senior. He comes from a terrific high school program in St. Anthony's. So he came into Temple having a terrific structure for the game and now having come back from an Achilles that put him out a year. He's about 90% back. That's what Fran Dunphy told us. And he moves really well. I love his confidence on the floor because he is playing like that's not part of his mindset. And I find it fascinating to hear Coach Dunphy talk about his relationship with Josh Brown at the practice in Charleston that I attended. He said, yeah, he's our guy, but I'm going to go challenge him today. And that's what he does. And practice with Coach Dunphy is an open dialogue with his guys from the seniors down to the freshmen. He'll bring Josh Brown in at times in the game and say, hey, Josh, what's working out there? Give me some idea on some sets we can run. Because Fran Dunphy is smart enough to know he's a man that doesn't have all the answers and knows that by engaging his players and some of his leaders, as Quentin Rose almost comes up with another steal, that's how you get the best results. And that's how you get your guys to grow. you got to give them some trust in decision-making as well. And that began for Temple five years ago in terms of Josh Brown. And Echionia picks up the short rebound. When Brown was a freshman coming out of St. Anthony, as you mentioned, Brooke, he had been coached there by a Hall of Famer, Bob Hurley. And so Coach Dunphy asked his freshman, what can you teach me about what you learned in high school? Think about that. You're so humble. And I love the hustle. Early on in this game, we knew both of these teams will get after it defensively. And those 50-50 balls can oftentimes set the pace for the for the set the tone for the pace of the game how aggressively you're playing it's all those little things that come into play and that's why coach martin and coach dunphy are very big on details very big on communication that foul was on obi and Echionia, one of the two co-captains for temple grab it on the pull up we're tied at four Nice back cut and a chance for three free throws for Quentin Rose after the personal against Chris Silva. When we come back, a season to remember for Coach Martin and his Gamecocks. had never been to the Final Four until last spring when Frank Martin led his team on a journey to a school record 26 wins. It was their first tournament appearance in 13 years, just the second time in two decades they'd gotten that far. They got their first tournament win in 44 years. And then, of course, on to the Final Four. They lost in the national semifinal to Gonzaga. But for the folks in Columbia, South Carolina, there was nothing like last year's run. Can you imagine being a South Carolina basketball fan last season? The men's team goes to the Final Four. The women's team goes to the Final Four, capping it off, of course, with the national championship. And, you know, Frank Martin, what he does so well is he connects with the community. That's what he's all about, is who is around us that we can build and grow with. So it starts with his players and his long legacy of guys that continue to come back and support the program. He comes from a great high school background as well, so he's been coaching for a, a long time. In fact, he won seven state championships. He's been in coaching basically for 33 years. Now to, to really cap, capitalize on that moment, a Final Four, how rare is it? Some coaches, most coaches never experience it. So when he was talking to us today at Shoot Around about the last time he walked into Madison Square Garden and what that felt like, they beat Temple, or excuse me, uh, Florida to go to the Final Four. And there's a really long walk when the buses pull in and when you arrive at Madison Square oh, Garden. Oh yeah, I know that You walk. gotta walk up. up basically this. four flights of stairs but it's a big ramp and it hurts to walk upstairs and he said <laughs> that walk up boy I can only imagine looking back how nerve-wracking it was but the walk down after the game I've never felt better coats are on the jump hook we welcome in Paul Carcatero with more on coach Martin 
A little less pressure tonight for Coach Frank Martin, for sure, but I was just outside their huddle. Defensively, the focus is on Quentin Rose, 13 and white. He's a slasher. Frank Martin mentioned to us that he will go at you and go at you hard. And from an athletic standpoint, he's got serious, serious skills. And then offensively, they think they have looks for Justin Manaya, the freshman for the Gamecocks, and he's got a bright future with the ball right now. Yeah, Justin Manaya, number 10, a 6'5 freshman from the metropolitan area out of Carrington Park, New Jersey. As the lead seesaws off of the Brown three, the bucket by Gravit, it's 8 7 Gamecocks. Off the bounce, there's Quentin Rose. Who NBA types are very intrigued by this young man. He's got a great pull-up jump shot. It's that stop on a dime. He, we mentioned his length at 6'8". Manaya trying to stay with him. Just didn't have the lateral quickness on the pull-up. Long three rattles off for David Beatty, freshman point guard from Philadelphia, into the ball game for South Carolina. Quick pass. Damian Moore working on the post. Moore's into the ball game early because of Flackby, the starting center for Temples, picked up a couple of fouls. This is Asani Gravit, redshirt junior from Georgia. Off to Justin Manaya. Under 10 to shoot. Beatty gonna have to put it up. First two points for the 6'2 freshman out of Imitep Charter School in Philadelphia. Decision making has got to be critical for South Carolina, especially on offense. As good as Temple is defensively, they're not gonna allow you a lot of shot opportunities. So as the, as the shot clock's running down, you gotta keep your composure. It's a terrific job by Beatty to beat, beat the clock. Nice by Brown to find more for the layup. Well, Temple's really gotten close to the rim. Never have expected South Carolina to allow them to open up that back door the way that Temple has, but that's exactly what Fran Duffy wanted to see. Six points in the paint. Let's go back and watch this terrific delivery to Damian Moore. And we mentioned how good Josh Brown is as a visionary and a point guard. And that's just one of the little things that makes him special, able to keep his composure, backing down the defense within traffic and find the open man. And the South Carolina defense centers around their all-conference center, Chris Silva. 6'9", 223. Jay Billis says Silva is one of the 30 best in-your-grill defenders, averaging a block and a half per game. This time the Gamecocks defense holds. Corey Holden, the Delaware transfer, puts up a wild shot. Here comes Josh Brown the other way for the Owls. Brown always under control. And I love the way that he's able to keep the defenders on his back. Corey Holden could not get around to get in front of Josh Brown to try and guard him. Instead, Brown changed his speed and changed the angle of his body to keep a direct route to the basket. That was brilliant. Kotsar draws the double team, kicks it back out. Booker spotting up in the corner. Moore with a rebound. He's played well since coming off the Temple bench. Did that go in? Did I that go in? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> the pass that becomes a shot. Hey, you know sometimes you mean to alley-oop somebody and it just works out. Quentin Rose has range. <laughs> I didn't know he had that kind of range. Nine points for Quentin Rose and uh, those last three are going to show up on some highlight shows. Yeah, I like this. Quentin Rose, you try to be unselfish when it just works out in your favor. You can't hate that. You can't be <laughs> mad at the player. What a shot. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Coles. Give joy, get joy. And Dr. Show. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN.
Back at Madison Square Garden for the Under Armour reunion. Temple with the six-point lead over South Carolina. And now we go back to the clean-shaven Paul Carcaterra. Oh, yes, Doug. Uh, Fran Dumphy and the stash are back. Dumphy rocked a mustache for 40 years. And then in 2011, he shaved it because Deontay Christmas, his star player, made good on his word for earning his degree. But for five of the last six years in the month of November, he grows the mustache to support Movember, which raises awareness for men's health issues such as prostate cancer. He told me tomorrow is December 1st, so he'll sit in front of the mirror and he'll shave it off once again. Yeah, when we talked to him earlier this week, he was very much looking forward <laughs> to getting back in front of the mirror and getting that clean look one more time. And he is somebody who, like so many Division I college basketball coaches around the country, are so active in Coaches versus Cancer, where he has raised over $14 million. And, of course, we are all in that struggle as well here on B-Week on the ESPN Networks. Well, Coach Dunphy, it's great that he had that conversation with a player. You know, to, to have done something so little in your day as Quentin Rose continues to just dominate this first half. But think about it. I mean, how many times do you shave? You know, once a day, a couple times a week. It just it seems so insignificant. But when you put it on a platform and allow coaches to really display their support in that way, it's great. Connects so many people, and that's what we've been saying. And that's what Fran Dunphy's all about. You know, she's been so supportive of the cause, as well as many others during his time at Temple. And actually, Brooke, if you need to know, I only have to shave about once a week. <laughs> Baby face, I knew it. Gamecocks with the basketball, down eight. And another wild shot by Booker. Here comes Temple, and here comes the man of the hour, number 13 in white, Quentin Rose. He's got 11 to lead all scores. And how about the shovel pass that was not completed? You know, Alani Moore, the second, comes off the bench, and Temple really doesn't lose anything at the point guard spot. He pushes the pace. I mean, he doesn't miss a beat. He comes in the game, and he looks to attack the paint and bust up that defense. And what a great asset to have as a reserve guy. And the driving dish working. Yeah, with uh, Brown out for most of last year with that Achilles injury, Moore got all kinds of experience for Coach Dunphy. Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, we'll have Coach Cal's seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats hosting Harvard at Rupp Arena. Then it's number two Kansas and Syracuse in the third annual Hoopal Miami Invitational at American Airlines Arena. Both games are on ESPN and streaming live on the app. You know, Coach Cowell had an interesting comment after their loss to Kansas and having come into this season highly ranked, he said, you know, we're really not a top five team right now. Maybe we will be toward the latter part of the season, but we're just not that. And for Cal to say that with the amount of talent he has on his team really says something, that there's some development work to be done. Well, they're still working out who will be the point guard. I know they talk about positionless basketball with Kentucky, but you do need to have yeah. either Quade Green. And then everybody else. you got to yeah. have that. So Quade Green and Shea Gilgis Alexander, the two freshmen still working it out. Foul on the turnaround by Felipe Hase, who's come into the game for South Carolina. Personal against Devondre Perry. So it's been an 11-0 run for the Owls. What have you seen, Brooke, out of Temple over the last five minutes? They did exactly what Fran Dunphy wanted to do. At the beginning of this game, they got behind the defense. They opened up the outside game because they were able to get those backdoor looks. But really, also, you could look to their defense. I mean, Quinton Rose had that steal on the inbounds for the quick score, and I think that kind of activated the rest of the guys to be, you know, extra in the lanes, extra aggressive, on the ball, off the ball, talking. When one player can do something like that, it really sets a spark for the rest of the team. And so far, South Carolina has not found an answer to Quentin Rose. Oh, when asking Coach Dunphy about how good Quentin Rose has been, nice back cut. And once again, the Owls able to attack the rim. Moore with the tip slam. He's got six. Again, South Carolina, so much pressure on the defense that when you overcommit on those lanes, you hit it at the right time when you're Temple on offense, you get those back to our passes. Silva couldn't handle the pass, and here comes Temple again. Alani Moore lets the defender go by. And again, it's the Owls getting the 50-50 ball. Devondre Perry picked it up. And a foul on the drive. 
as Shiz Alston put it on the deck. Personal foul against Wesley Myers, the grad transfer from the University of Maine. Now, when trying to get Coach Dunphy to talk about how good offensively Alston Rose and Anecchione have been this year, he's quick to point out, yeah, they've done well, and especially Quentin Rose, but, uh, you know, he's made really good progress shooting well, but he can get better at rebounding and defense. It's, it's something that maybe the announcers don't notice quite so much, but certainly <laughs> the coaches do. Well, it certainly helps you get minutes. I know that, having played myself and been okay on offense but by the time I got to college I I'd never played defense and that was the only time I was going to get out on the floor and so what coach Dunphy wants them to do is to take pride and to buy in defensively because when you're a better defender when you're a better rebounder you're a better offensive player nice hesitation that's a turnover though and that's one thing Fran Dunphy doesn't want to see this team does not turn the ball over and Paul you can add to what we were just talking about Yes, today during shoot-around, uh, uh, Brooke and I spoke to Coach Dumpy. He made no bones about it. Defense, defense, defense. He thought the engine of this South Carolina offense was Hassani Gravit. He's got four points. And then the other player who he knew was super explosive was Chris Silva, who's coming off a career high. Zero points. Yeah, Silva. Last time out Monday went 10 of 13 from the floor 26 points as Paul mentioned his career high at FIU And what was a wild game of runs? I mean South Carolina jumped out to a double-figure lead triple by Shiz Alston his first three of the night and then the turnovers committed by the Second unit for South Carolina allowed FIU to get right back in that ball game it was One of the few games where Frank Martin said he could not rely on his bench he the heavy starter minutes in that game See the collision, that's going to be the foul on Gravit. Seventh turnover committed by South Carolina, and the Owls up double digits. Got to protect the paint, but you also got to protect the three point line because Temple can hit them. Ten in each of the first three games this season. That was Jimmy V's dream. The Big Apple is lit. Zags and Cats, Deuce in Connecticut. It's the Jimmy V Classic. Should be a fun Tuesday of basketball, and you can join ESPN of the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. With Brooke Weisbrod and Paul Carcaterra, I'm Doug Sherman. This is the Under Armour reunion at Madison Square Garden. Josh Brown of the Temple Owls with an 11-point lead over the Gamecocks. That's the leading scorer so far. Quentin Rose and at the free throw line, Devondre Perry, freshman out of Polytechnic Institute in Baltimore, coming off of his career high. He scored seven against LaSalle. That's his first point tonight. I really like Devondre Perry. So against LaSalle, he came in and within a minute, he had a huge follow-up rebound dunk. I mean, just that kind of energy he brings in. And then a few minutes later, he steps back and he hits a corner three. So he's got confidence to make an impact right away. Good size, too. Yeah, Coach Dunphy says his 6'6", 220-pound freshman is not afraid of the spotlight. Good ball movement to find Silva, who's denied at the rim by Anecchione. At the other end, number zero trying to finish off the play, and Anecchione a little strong on the three. I think that's a bit quick on the trigger. You just get a terrific turnover. You've got all this momentum now. Make the smart play there. I think transition three is a little quick. Booker. Another block. Yeah, he gets blocked by Perry. And quickly ahead, the Owls. Good hustle by Gravit to knock that ball out of bounds. Take a look at that Temple defense again. They had been fronting their post, but good help side to come on the back side there for Anecchione. Top it off, Perry gets his hands on one. You mentioned it, 6'6", 220 pounds. So they are really able to compete with the size of South Carolina. And they have busted up their defense in a way that is very surprising. I mean, the South Carolina defense doesn't typically allow backdoor plays, dunks, offensive rebounds. Gravid lost it off his own leg and out of bounds. Turnover number eight for the Gamecocks. 
Paul. You know, Brooke, you mentioned uh, the backdoor capability for Temple. That was actually the message in the last huddle with Coach Dumphy, thinking that the South Carolina defense is pressing out really, really hard on the shooters. will be backdoor opportunities. And Josh Brown, you mentioned too, coming from Coach Hurley, what could he learn from a guy like Josh Brown? He took a lot of ownership in that last huddle in terms of directing the young guys. It's great stuff, Paul, because you've got a lot of young guys on this team, and you need someone other than Dumphy to reinforce that message on the floor. And players have to take as much responsibility in the game as the coaches do. Great job by the Temple defense just to wall up and make it tough on Silva. That's block number four for the team. And Coach Dumphy loves having Josh Brown around. He earned his bachelor's degree in criminal justice last spring, so that let you know where his head is at. And as you mentioned, out of St. Anthony High School, so he has been very well coached, a uh, native of Newark, New Jersey. Foul called on ball. That's against Delani Moore, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. That's his first and the team's fifth against Temple. Nate Pierre Lewis has come into the game for Temple for the first time. 6'4 freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey. Got a number of guys on both of these rosters with New York, New Jersey ties. Chance to play at the world's most famous arena tonight. Including that young man. Manaya though misfires on the runner. And if that name, Justin Manaya sounds familiar to New York sports fans, it's because his father was the longtime general manager of the New York Mets, Omar Manaya. And so Justin grew up in a baseball world. As a matter of fact, we've got a, a neat picture of him during spring training down at Port St. Lucie <laughs> as a seven-year-old. But Justin gave up baseball about four years ago to focus fully on basketball, and he has evolved rapidly into somebody who was off the radar for years and now he's starting for a team as a freshman that a year ago was in the final four great athlete and i know nothing about his baseball background i don't know what his position is but to me that pose looked like a 95 mile an hour fastball coming right at you well he played center field and a left-handed pitcher so he's a 6-6 left-hander who you've got to think if he ever wanted to go back to baseball he'd have an opportunity with more on Manaya, let's go back to Paul. Yeah, Justin Manaya is quite the athlete, and Omar Manaya, being the general manager of the New York Mets for so many years in scouting players, he said when Justin took a liking to basketball, he couldn't believe the type of athletes and the can't miss type of guys you see right away. A lot like baseball, you know what you're looking at, but when he stepped on basketball courts a little bit out of his comfort zone, he was wowed by the sheer strength, speed, and size of these athletes. Yeah, Paul, and the recruiting of Justin Manaya was interesting. Current South Carolina assistant coach Chuck Martin is actually close to Justin's father, Omar, through the baseball world because Chuck's father-in-law is a Yankee scout, and he had met Omar years ago and kept in touch. And while Chuck Martin was assistant under Tom Crean at Indiana over the last three, four years, he had kept track and said, well, you know, they didn't offer, the Hoosiers didn't offer, but certainly keeping an eye on him. And then when Indiana made its coaching change, Chuck Martin actually recommended to Frank Martin before he was hired at USC that he should take on this Manaya kid. And very quickly, like I said, he has turned into a real impact player early on. Well, he's going to have to have a bigger impact in this game because Temple right now has been owning the paint. 14 points for the Owls in the paint. And that is indeed Chuck Martin, who we just saw with Frank Martin, his Gamecocks down 16 to the Temple Owls at the Garden. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Colts. Give joy, get joy. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. Welcome back to the Garden. Fran Dumphy saw something special in Marcus Forrest years ago when Marcus was a camper at Dumphy's Temple basketball camp. He later enrolled at Temple and became a manager for the basketball team 
three years ago, he had trouble breathing and went to the ER where doctors found a large cancerous tumor around his heart. After battling through chemo, the great news, Marcus is cancer-free and back with the team. Dumphy says it best when he describes Marcus. During Marcus's time in the hospital, Dumphy asked, what could he bring him? Marcus's response, some game film and a good attitude because he was sick of talking about cancer and he was going to beat it. Marcus's touching story at the half. Yeah, indeed, I look forward to seeing that. Uh, those of us on the crew have had the opportunity to see it already, but uh, if you can stay around, it's a tremendous piece. And, and I like the fact that on the bottom of the screen, you may have noticed their hashtag, may the force to be with you. I like it. <laughs> They're all rooting for him for sure. Good drive and dish as Alston though couldn't get the assist because the bucket was missed by Damian Moore. Well this game started with the Gamecocks up 10-9 but since that time it has been all Owls. Outscored them 21-4 since then. We haven't felt any kind of flow or rhythm to the South Carolina offense. Temple's done a great job of disrupting anything they want to do. Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. It's the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn takes on number three, Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. The Huskies have played in and won, not surprisingly, the Jimmy V Women's Classic each of the last six years. No, Imagine. not the UConn women's team. Really? Always one of my favorite games of the year. That is a classic. Notre Dame coming off a big win against the defending national champion South Carolina. They were down 12 and came back. And Gabby Williams from UConn, well, she just went eight for eight mm -hmm. from three in their last game. No big deal. It's going to be an awesome matchup. Little up and under by Shiz Alston. Temple will keep. Well, the numbers are not good for the Gamecocks so far, shooting 30% from the floor. They've missed seven of eight from distance. Double-figure turnovers already, and they have allowed the Owls to get out big. Rose back to Alston in the high post, and he traveled. So South Carolina's adjustment to a 2-3 zone can affect Temple and their ability to get behind the defense and do some of those pressure release backdoor passes. And now you're going to start to look for Temple to really attack and probe that zone where they can kick it out, shoot some three-point shots. So South Carolina clearly trying to change the angle of this game, saying, hey, let's go zone, let's slow it down a bit. We keep trying to pound on the inside, but Nechionia, oh, that's just nasty. Come on. One. Look at it. it. He blocked it off his elbow. That's 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 saying you're a good shot blocker, right? You get up so high, <laughs> you're blocking shots off your forearm and your elbow. 235 remaining in the half. South Carolina with the basketball down 15. Beatty uses the ball screen, pull up just inside the three-point line, and he's got a couple of points. It's twice. So far in this first half, where he's beat the shot clock. Composed, under pressure. Beatty, the freshman from Philly. Averaging only about three and a half points per game so far this season. He has doubled that. Rose drives the lane to the left hand, and he's got a chance for three. Quentin Rose does not waste dribbles. And the way that he moves is so smooth. And you see his reaction as if, of course, I'm going to knock this in. I mean, the guy plays with a tremendous amount of confidence. You can really see what makes him so appealing to scouts. Even the release off of his foul shot, it's like a pretty pure shooter to me. As a team, Temple's hitting 81% of its foul shots this year. Rose up to 14 points to lead all scores. Kotsar for three. And finally some offense for South Carolina. Mike Kotsar hits an outside shot. And coming off matching a career high against FIU. Rose tried to force the pass inside. Damian Moore saying it's his fault, but that was a forced pass. And here's the three from Kotsar. 
From the top of the key, some much-needed offense and a sigh of relief for South Carolina. Coats are one of two returning starters off of last year's Final Four team. Has five. Final minute 20, the Gamecocks looking to whittle down this 13-point deficit. South Carolina running the weave. Trying to spread out Temple's defense. Good spin move, but once again, Obi's there to save the day. As the shot clock went off, they say it's good, so that's six quick points for Kotsar. And here come the Gamecocks. And changing back to man. So what they could be doing is going zone off a miss and man on a make. That's a two for Inecione. First couple of points for the senior from Springfield, Virginia. Beatty, feeling it. Ooh. South Carolina with the three offense. Beatty, Coatsar, getting him right back in this game. Bang, bang, bang. Time out on the floor at the Garden. South Carolina making a push. Late in the first half, South Carolina has hit three consecutive three-pointers to draw back to within nine. And it just comes from some confidence. You have to find ways to open up the game. So South Carolina had been attacking the basket, getting rejected. So instead, they say, okay, you don't think we can score at sign five? We got other weapons, and that's what makes this team so good and, and surprising last year because you knew Sundarius Thornwell could make all the shots you needed. You knew South Carolina had a great defense, but you know what? They still have scores coming back and returning this season with a solid defense. So for people to say, well, South Carolina might not be that good this year. Well, wait and see, okay? Because that's what a lot of people might have said last season. They certainly weren't even the talk at the top of the SEC world, let alone the Final Four. Temple to knock that down at the end of the first half. Josh Brown beats the buzzer. He's got seven. As we head to break, Temple has its lead back to double figures. Coach Dumphy's club with the big lead over the SEC opponent. Let's take another look at the shot. Josh Brown with a good ball fake. He releases it in plenty of time. It'll be a two. Let's go to Paul with Coach Dunphy. Coach, you locked him down for the majority of that first half, and then they got some life. Where were the breakdowns defensively? Well, I thought we, we didn't really guard Kutzar at the top of the key there one time, and then at the end, we had a, I thought we had a loose ball chance down here, and it got kicked back out to him, and then we didn't step up on Beatty, too. He made a big three for them. So they had three threes late that really hurt us. Quentin Rose, 14 points on the offensive end. What's impressed you with his play? Well, I think he's read the defense pretty good. There's a lot of overplaying going on, and we got to go back to her on a lot of those cuts. And I thought, thought he did that a very good, uh, did a good job there. Thank you. All right, thanks. Well, David Beatty, the Philadelphia kid who grew up on the north side of Philly, has been keeping South Carolina close. But Quentin Rose and Shiz Alston doing it for the Owls. Our halftime report coming up. week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Welcome back to the Under Armour reunion. At Madison Square Garden, the Temple Owls with a comfortable lead coming out of the break 38-27 with the Gamecocks making a push to draw back to within nine. But the story offensively for Temple was their six foot eight inch wing, Quentin Rose, sophomore out of Bishop Kearney High School in Rochester, made the conferences all rookie team a year ago, and he has put on a really nice display through the first 20 minutes here tonight. Coming off a game where he scored a season high 21 against LaSalle, he shot 10 of 17 in that game, and tonight, well, six of eight from the floor, and he's just come out of this game Aggressive on defense, looking for a shot, getting to the rim, but playing with poise. I mean, you watch him just handle the basketball, and he looks like he's been doing it forever. So such, a, such an effortless game so far, and a smooth game for Quentin Rose. And you know what that means, that there's a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes 
to make it look so smooth. No doubt. With more on the South Carolina side of things, let's go back to Paul. We can't turn the ball over. That's what Frank Martin just told me. And Chris Silva, most notably, five turnovers in the first half, zero points. Remember, he had 26 points in their last outing. And Frank Martin said defensively, the half-court defense has been good, but the turnovers have been so costly, especially against a team like Temple, who can get out and really fly around the court in those fast break points for Temple. So the turnovers, everything. And you know when a coach gets to biting his nails, there's really something going on. And turnovers have been a huge problem at times where South Carolina could have just gotten a quality shot. And instead, it's, it's trying a little too hard instead of, hey, let's get an entry pass into the wing, look into the post. One to two and two to three. But South Carolina facing that Temple defense. More of this. And that's Yonia. And that is the 10th South Carolina turnover. So what was that uh, Coach Martin said in the timeout there? Yeah, don't turn it over. Halftime? By the way, Ernest DeFlack be the starting center for Temple, who played only a couple of minutes in that first half because of two fouls, has already picked up his third, now walling up. To no avail, Chris Silva has his first two points of the night. That's the easiest score we've seen South Carolina get in this game. And one of the few times Chris Silva has had open positioning. One time against a flat he got the better of him. And Echionia doesn't get the roll and doesn't get the call. Offensive foul. Obi and Echionia getting out in the wings. And that's got to be where, with Mike Kotsar, he's got to meet the ball. And Chris Silva has to make sure that he's open to get it. You know, when there's a turnover off an unforced error and a simple pass like that, it's the responsibility of both guys. The guys who pass it, the guy who's supposed to come meet the pass, too. You've got to go out there and get it. A flat P takes a seat again on the Temple bench and replaced once again by Damian Moore, the 6'11 sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi. Manaya picked up his dribble. Off to Booker. Feed the post to Silva. Steps through the double team and missed it. Tied up. Couple of elbows as an Echionian Silva gets separated. Let's go back and take another look and see what led to the action underneath. Just a tough rebound. Both guys getting their hands on it and wanting to maintain possession, of course. Just a little friendly competition, nothing more than that. Although the officials aren't so sure, so they're going to take a video review to make sure nobody did anything to rise to the level of a flagrant foul with an elbow. And both guys able to keep their hands straight up there, and I, I didn't see anybody swinging any elbows <clears throat> after the play. <laughs> Some quality stare downs. Yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a play on. Well, if South Carolina is going to come back and win this basketball game, as Paul alluded to, they really need for that man, number 30 in black. Maybe there was a little forearm there, but they need Silva on the floor and, and performing well. He comes in averaging 14 points, eight rebounds a game. And he played so well in the Gamecocks NCAA tournament run to the Final Four last year that really that confidence carried through in the offseason and into the early part of this year. But we have not seen that so much tonight at the Garden. And the officials must not feel as quite as confident as we do that there was many extra activity to warrant a, any more than just to play on it and get a flagrant here. But well, this angle here made me think there's a little shove from Silva, but... Does it rise to the level of a call? I don't think so. No, because I think the officials did a great job of stopping the play right there and, and ending the action. And these guys are mature enough to know it's, it's not worth pursuing any more than that. And looks like we will just play on. Well done. Good call by the officials. That's a good look at Obi and Eccioni. He's got two brothers also playing Division I basketball including his brother Namdi, who's at a, a very good St. Peter's team in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. We'd have quite a lot to say if they all played for the same team. An Echionia <laughs> to an Echionia to an Echionia. 
That's why, that's why you're the play-by-play -play guy. You know better than me, buddy. Yeah, it's easier to just stick with Obi. Obi to Namdi. Here he is fighting to get the basketball. The Owls certainly could stand to get him going as well. Hassani grab it. Working on Josh Brown. Wide open three. Felipe Hase missed everything. Hase came into the game having hit seven of his 15 three-point shots this year, but uh, he has cooled off dramatically, as have most of the Gamecocks. I think for the Gamecocks, you know, try to attack the rim. You had a barrage of three-point shots that got you back in the game, but don't rely on those. What you want to do is push the pace, attack it in the paint the way Temple did you in the first half. Here's Booker feeding the post. Bad pass to try and find the cutter. A lot of contact, no call. Here comes Quentin Rose, and he's tied up. Possession arrow belongs to South Carolina. What a tremendous defensive play there by Grabbit. He found the only open spot on the basketball. Got his hand on it. Here's Rose going up. Oh, um, a lot more than basketball than he got on that play. Missed the opportunity and a call there from the officials. South Carolina remains cold from the field. Good extra pass to give it back to Brown, but he was way off the mark. Grab it. Behind the back in traffic, and that's a bad recipe. Another South Carolina turnover. Let's see if Temple can make him pay, and the foul is called against Mike Kotsar. Turnover number 12 against the SEC school. It's surprising to me to watch South Carolina give up so many unforced turnovers. This is just simply from Temple applying the pressure. And this is this is entry pass. We're talking to the wing and to the post, and South Carolina is unable to get there. There you see the Saturday doubleheader we've got starting at 3.30, beginning with uh, Kentucky and Harvard, followed by Syracuse and Kansas. At the third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational, should be lots of fun. Damian Moore now with nine points. And a travel. Turnover 13 for South Carolina. Again, another unforced turnover simply because of the pressure of Josh Brown. Gets up the lane. You get a little nervous about making that pass because he's got the anticipation. It can get in the wing for a deflection. South Carolina's got to get their head in this game. Quentin Rose, and he will head to the free throw line. Foul on David Beatty. Slow crossover and brings it with him into the lane off of one step and the strength to go up between three defenders at South Carolina. Balance to finish nicely. Rose looks totally in charge of this game. And seven of 10 from the floor, now a game high 17 points. For the former Albany City Rock, that's his AAU program, same program that helped produce Tobias Harris of the Pistons. Jimmer Fredette now playing in China. Also Kevin Herter, the terrific sophomore for the Maryland Terrapins, came out of that City Rocks program. And you can see why he was selected as a finalist for the USA Under-19 basketball team, because he's got that kind of next-level talent. And Fran Duffy says, if you can rebound, if you can defend, that's the next step in your career, because we know we can shoot. 19 points for Quinn Rose. His season high came last time out at LaSalle when he scored 21. Justin Manaya will head to the free throw line off of the foul committed by Damian Moore. Well, Quentin Rose continues to dominate this game. He's hit the outside shot. He's hit the pull-up jumper. He's gotten all the way to the rim. He's just giving South Carolina problems. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cole. Give joy, get joy. And Dr. Show. The Big Apple is lit. 
Zags and Cats, Pews in Connecticut. It's the Jimmy B Classic. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. Frank Martin, when asked his recollections of Jim Valvano, said of Jimmy V, quote, his spirit immediately made you feel good, made me feel like his best friend. And that really sums up what Jimmy V was all about, and it's been so long since he walked the halls at ESPN. But, uh, folks... Don't forget what he was and what he continues to be. I think you hear that from a lot of coaches and, and their experience with Jimmy V. And I'm sure that's how he made every single person he interacted with in his life feel like they were his best friend. Yeah, I had the opportunity to meet Coach Belvano one time walking through the halls at ESPN back in the early 90s. Same thing as what Frank said. Made you feel like you were the most important person in the hallway, in the room, wherever you were. 47-33 Temple, after a late-in-the-half push by South Carolina, has pushed back nicely here through the first four and a half minutes of the second half. Shiz Alston. Josh Brown left it short. As Temple gets back defensively, Paul has more on that. Coach Dumphy and his staff thrilled with the way they're playing defense in the paint against the big guys from South Carolina, and that's part of their DNA. It always has been with Fran Dumphy. I remember when we were talking to him the other day, he told his star, Quentin Rose, when he was trying out for that 19 and under USA team coached by John Calipari. There's scorers everywhere. Defend and rebound, and that's the DNA of this squad. Now, well, he has emerged this year truly as a super sophomore for this Temple team that was picked in the preseason to finish seventh in the American Athletic Conference. And I would be surprised, as Alston is called for the foul, if they finish seventh. I mean, of course, Cincinnati, Wichita State, you understand why they were one and two. UCF is still without its top player, B.J. Taylor's hurt. Their seven-foot, six-inch wonder, Taco Fall, has missed time with a hip. But you've still got SMU, UConn, Houston all picked ahead of Temple. I got to figure the Owls are going to finish higher than seven. I, I would have to think so as well. I mean, you've got experience, you've got balance, you've got defense. And a team that has all kinds of confidence. And, and we're not even talking about the talent yet. You've got all these intangibles that you put together with a team that has skill. Uh, yeah, they're going to finish way better than seven. Well, no Coach, question. Coach Martin, when asked about facing Temple tonight, said, well, they're coached by Fran Dunphy. It's Fran Dunphy they don't rattle. So... Great respect, and when you've got a guy like Fran Dunphy with the resume he has, you know, he spent 17 years as head coach at Penn, took the Quakers to nine NCAA tournaments, and all he's done is take that success and translate it here with Obi and Echionia and the Temple Owls. The vision of some of his players, I mean, certainly Lonnie Moore has shown himself to be a dynamic passer. But the reason that they have such low turnovers on this team, and it's it's incredible for, for me to hear it from Fran Dumpy because he said, it's a skill. It's a skill to take care of the basketball. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he talked about going through your progressions just like you're a quarterback. You see that pass to the wing from Quentin Rose. He almost headed up, ended up in the bench of Temple, but that's such a, a great way to describe it. The skill you have to say if guy A isn't open, where do I go B and C and D and react in real game time? So that's why you don't get rattled if you're a Temple out. Another B block. Denied by Anechionia. That is the seventh block for the Owls. That great timing. He stays clear of Beatty so that he doesn't foul him with the body. And then the lightning pass from Alani Moore. What great vision to find Obi. Underneath the paint, South Carolina. It's their defense. It's kind of head-scratching tonight, the way that Temple's been able to pick them apart. Another brick laid up by South Carolina. Silva working hard, and on second effort, he's got the bucket. Silva's got to be more demanding of the basketball here in the second half. He's been the scorer for this team. Last game, had that career, seventh career double-double. Alani Moore with an air ball. 
Can the Gamecocks make another push? Here comes their point guard, Hassani Gravin, to the bucket. Out of bounds. Gamecocks will keep it. See, this season, you don't have Sundarius Thornwell to count on, so Chris Silva has got to be the man. You see the second and third chance efforts. Again, he's grabbing that rebound, and it's almost like he's just jumping straight up instead of trying to go into the rim, find some contact. Temple has been the more aggressive team all five positions tonight. Led by that man, Quinn Rose with 22 points, and the lead stretches to 17. Rose is 9 of 12 tonight. South Carolina staring at its greatest deficit of the ball game. In they go to Silva. And Echionia with another rebound. So the move was there, the action, the aggressiveness. But it looked to me like Silva didn't, didn't look for the rim. His head was more focused on just getting the ball up and, and getting the shot off rather than trying to finish the play. Chisalston tries to go back door into traffic and it's going to open up. A run out for South Carolina. The layup is good by Nate Pierre Lewis, the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, with his first two points. And the ninth turnover for Temple for a team that only averages 10. So South Carolina still doing their diligence on defense. Quinn Rose. Well, pick it up where he left off. I'll pick you up here, partner. 22 points tonight on 9 of 12 from the floor. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Back inside Madison Square Garden in New York City. And on Tuesday, we'll have the Jimmy B Classic, Villanova, Gonzaga. You can't beat that for a matchup in early December. And then how about the old Big East rivals getting together again? Syracuse, UConn, back together Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, for the Cuse, it'll be their first game on the road. Boy, they better shore up their defense. Their last two games, they've given up 48% from behind the three in Kansas. They've got five guys shooting 36% or better from behind the three. So that Q's 2-3 matchup zone. That extended out a little bit, get a little feistier. So you're saying you think the uh, Orange are the underdogs in that game? Well. They're undefeated, you know. You know. Hey, it's early on in the season. I just know Kansas knows how to shoot the basketball. Well, Coach Beheim has <laughs> solid reinforcements in that zone. He's got a, a freshman class that was not highly touted, but uh, they've got a lot of length and athletic ability, so they've been defending for the most part better but yeah they're getting into the deep end of the pool with Kansas coming up and their 2-3 zone it's it's hard to score against it's something that we actually studied when I played that's how we would put in our 2-3 zone with the matchup and, and trying to make sure that you extend from the really the bottom of the block all the way out to the wing make it difficult for defenses to get in and I'm sure Temple has a somewhere along the line a 2-3 a matchup zone of their own teams would hate playing against. The defense on both of these teams is a nightmare. And Echionia, after the jab step, finds nothing but net. He's giving all kinds of effort, both on the glass, on defense, he's hitting shots. So many things both he and Quentin Rose are doing well tonight for the Temple Owls. And Echionia, along with the eight points, he's got five blocks, three steals. It's been a tough night for Frank Booker at the offensive end, the former Oklahoma Sooner and graduate transfer from FAU has only two points. So if Miami beats Clemson in the ACC championship game, do the Hurricanes yes. go to the college football playoff? Does Clemson still go? Could two ACC teams make it to that final four? Why not? I mean, I think if they were SEC schools, everybody is so quick to brand SEC football as the best in the country, and, and rightly so. But, yeah, I mean, Clemson reigning national champions, come on, got to give them a break. I, I'm really looking forward to that game, though. It, 
Miami, the whole turnover chain has just, that's got my attention. I, I can't get enough of it. Well, I should point out Clemson's only losses to Syracuse this year, and Paul and I both call that our alma mater. Paul, what are your thoughts about the big game coming up? You know, I think, uh, Brooke, you mentioned two ACC teams. If Miami didn't lose to Pitt last week, uh, I think they would have had a chance, you know, but I think right now it looks like it's going to be a one-league type of uh, bid for the ACC into the college football playoff. The turnover chain, you know, they lead the nation in forced turnovers, and that chain's been out quite a bit, 17 times on the season. But Clemson and Kelly Bryan, I think uh, the quarterback for the Tigers, I think they're a little seasoned in this spot, too. I think Clemson, with the best defensive line in the country, They'll come to play, and I'm anxious to get down to Charlotte to watch that one. Well, Temple getting a big performance here from Damian Moore, the sophomore out of Callaway High School in Memphis, Tennessee, with a new career high. Just keeps adding to it. Now 15 points, and the lead is up to 19, and that draws a timeout from Coach Frank Martin. Let's take a break at Madison Square Garden. Temple looking at a win here at the Under Armour Reunion. Twenty-two points, nine of twelve from the floor. Quentin Rose has taken over this basketball game to give Temple a 19-point lead. Still 9:30 left to play in the second half, but he's been able to score inside, outside, and how about this shot? Meant to be an alley oop for Obi and Echionia. No big deal. Come on, where's the me? smile? No, no, no. The reaction is perfect because that tells me he's cool, he's calm, he's collected. He's done this before. You think, he's big done time play. you think he's done that before? Well, you got to act like it, <laughs> even if you haven't. Well, his measurables are outstanding. Came into this game sixth in the American Conference in scoring at 17 and a half per game. He's up to 22. Seventh in the league in rebounding. Fifth in steals. At least on the offensive end, he seems to be the total package. In the last two games, shooting 19 for 29 from the floor. It's very efficient as we see Temple in their 2-3 zone. Grab it with seven on the shot clock. Has the pass knocked away. Fight for the ball comes to the Gamecocks. They've got to shoot it. And now Josh Brown, the fifth-year senior from Newark, New Jersey, will slow things down a bit. Under nine minutes to go in regulation. Saw the second half shooting there. The Gamecocks stone cold. Brown with a lot of dribbling. Has his pass deflected out of bounds by Gravit. The Owls will have four seconds on the shot clock with which to work. Block shot Silva. He comes up with a loose ball. It is a shot clock violation. They say South Carolina had not gotten possession before the horn went off. So you could see before the ball was inbounded, Chris Silva and another player from South Carolina were still talking about defensive assignments. You see they're still trying to get it together right now. He and Wesley Myers. And Temple nearly able to get a quick, easy alley-oop dunk off the inbounds play simply because there was no communication on who's guarding who. This is Myers out of Boys and Girls High School in New York City. He's a Brooklyn native, lying back in his hometown. Here's Beatty, the Philly freshman. He's had the hot hand. He's about the only offense you've been able to count on for the Gamecocks. He's played with a purpose tonight, and it's about getting to the rim and taking shots. As the shot clock's running down, he's wanted the ball, demanded it, and produced. Alston. Bounce it inside, Damian Moore on the turnaround. He's been feeling it. Two more for his career high. That's up to 17 points. Booker. Halfway down and it came out. Back to Rose. Temple so difficult to figure out their their schemes and their defense. I think in that last possession they they showed zone and went man. Either way, still keeping South Carolina guessing 
well into the second half. Says Alston, no. Fight for the ball. Boy, look at that young man work. Damian Moore had never scored more than 11 in a game. That came against UConn last February. He's up to 19 and counting off the bench. Yeah, he exploded just four points against LaSalle in his last game. But the sophomore came to play tonight, putting up big time performance against the Final Four club. Well, if I gave most college basketball fans five guesses to say the five winningest programs in college basketball history, I think most folks would come up with the top four. Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina, and Duke. Number five, these Temple Owls. That would surprise me. That's a great trivia question. Temple, you know, in each of the last 10 years under the direction of Fran Dunphy has taken down at least one ranked opponent. Now, of course, this won't count, but still going up against a, an accomplished SEC team, one that made it to the Final Four last year, further serves notice in the American about Temple being for real. Under six minutes to go, and Echionia, nice look. Layup missed, but the foul call against Chris Silva. Damian Moore giving the extra effort tonight, including picking up the loose ball through the legs, back up again between two defenders. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cole. Give joy, get joy. Tonight on SportsCenter at 1 a.m. following MLS, drama in Big D as the Cowboys try to snap their three-game losing streak against Washington. Keyshawn Johnson will break it down. Also, will we see Hacka Simmons in Boston? The 76ers try to take down the NBA's best. And Marty Smith with Dabo Sweeney. It's all at 1 a.m. Eastern on SportsCenter following MLS and always streaming on the ESPN app. Marty Smith and Dabo Sweeney could have a great TV show together. Who's who's cooler mm. than Marty Smith? Uh, nobody. And who's that got the cooler job? Who's got the <laughs> coolest job? Marty just gets to, you know, he's no longer just the NASCAR guy. He goes anywhere and everywhere, and he seems to be the coolest guy in the room. I would agree with you. Seems to be the sentiment from everybody. I have yet a chance to meet him, but watching him on TV, I feel like I'm his best friend. So I think when we meet, we'll be best friends. I still think about when uh, he went to the, the lake house with Coach Saban, and the two of them jumped into the lake off the uh, the boathouse. <laughs> Who gets Coach Saban to jump into the lake house, or from the lake house into the water? So Marty will be with Dabo coming up 1 a.m. Eastern time on Sports Center. With more on Temple, let's go back to Paul. 24 points and the hot hand. Quentin Rose finally gets a breather, but I'll tell you, watching him courtside, he is gliding and flying around at a different level than every single player on this court. The breather, maybe it's to get some other players in action because I didn't even see him breathing heavy. That's a good point because that's how it appears, he, is that he's got this extra level of energy and effort that no one else can get to. And tonight it's just gone smoothly for him, exactly. Doesn't even look like he's breaking a sweat this evening. And you know, the 24 points are great, but Coach Dumphy's gonna be more excited about the fact that he's turned the ball over just once yes. in 31 minutes. No doubt. Call on Damian Moore will send Justin Manaya to the line. There's a good look at the Rochester, New York native. You think he'll go back and watch that play of him hitting that three-quarter court alley -oop oh, pass? Oh, he, he probably did shot? it. He probably did it halftime. <laughs> you know it's on his phone. Let me see how many retweets yep. this play got. Well, no, he doesn't. He doesn't occur to me as somebody that would need to check his phone every two seconds like me. <laughs> well, I think he's not going to have to look any farther than that 1 a.m. Sports Center because it's going to wind up oh, on yeah. top plays. Just over five minutes remaining at Madison Square Garden. 
in this Under Armour reunion. Temple has led since the early going. South Carolina had a 10-9 lead, and ever since then, it's been all Owls. Well, I, I enjoy every opportunity that we get to sit in on a Temple Owls practice because going and seeing Fran Dunphy, Professor Fran Dunphy doing his thing, you know, he is he's somebody who, by his own admission, since he got out of college in the early 70s, throughout his coaching career, has evolved, and he's a teacher. I mean, yes, he's a coach, but he's a teacher, and he, he's guiding and molding these young men who he takes into his program. And he also is a professor of a class offered by Temple University in the fall semester. It's called Management Theory and Practice from the Locker Room to the Boardroom, and every Tuesday and Thursday, although not this morning, He's in the classroom at 9.30 in the morning lecturing to the young minds at Temple University. Real advice from you know, a big time coach. And what I would imagine a lot of what's going on in that class is just about how to connect to people, no matter if you're the janitor or if you're the CEO. But it's about building that connection and, and the community to then lead the group to produce results. You see it, everything that they've done here on the floor. The passing's been excellent. They've handled the ball incredibly well. They've scored in the paint. And this is their 36th point now in the paint. Left by Kotsar at the other end. Well, Coach Dunphy, when I asked him uh, during his years of teaching the class at Penn at the prestigious Wharton School and now teaching it at the Fox School of Business at Temple, he said, you know, I was thinking I, he might have had one of the Trump children come through. Who, who are the famous names that you've had who've taken your class? And he said uh, the one that sticks out most to him is Mark DeRosa, longtime Major League Baseball player who was a two-sport star at Penn, now works for the MLB Network. It's interesting, fascinating for me to talk to Coach Dunphy, and here's a taste of what he does along with his fellow professor, Lynn Anderson, he says she does all the work. He comes in and lectures and really just has an open dialogue with the students. Fran Dunphy says mentoring is something everyone needs to do. And with more on the Temple head coach, we go back to Paul. Well, Doug, we saw Professor Dunphy there before the break in his interaction with all the students at Temple. And giving back is something that he's always done to the greater Philly communities, part of the big brothers and big sisters of greater Philly. He's on the board of trustees. And he was a big brother actually twice. And one of the most rewarding things in his experience with the big brothers, one of the members that he mentored actually came full circle, put a roof on his house. So he understood the significance of of paying it forward and doing great things for the community and giving opportunities for kids who normally wouldn't have them. Yeah, and Paul, and the, the caveat to that, Coach Dunphy wanted to point out that not only did his former protege put a roof on his house, it didn't leak. Yeah. He, the guy was a roofer, a professional roofer, and uh, Coach Dunphy's house to this day remains bone dry. Now I'm there. He's so unselfish with his time and, and his wisdom and what he wants to give you know, to his players, to the students, and to the community. I mean, both he and Frank Martin are just awesome examples of what you want to see coaches do and, and the impact you want them to have in these young men's lives. You talked about Coach Martin's path. He's a 51-year-old Miami native who spent better than a decade as a high school basketball coach in South Florida and, and had great success. Finally got his opportunity as an assistant coach at Northeastern University in Boston and after a couple of stops at Cincinnati and Kansas State under Coach Huggins got his first opportunity to be a Division I head coach a little bit later in life than some other folks. Manaya with that strong take. And some athleticism shown there. And that would be quite a jump to be an elite baseball athlete and then jump into the world of basketball, your muscles are going to go into total shock. And having 
played both softball and basketball in college, I can tell you that, yeah, you're real sore trying to get off of that softball field in center field where you really don't have to run a whole lot of sprints, just chase down the ball every now and then. Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. It's the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one UConn takes on number three Notre Dame at the XL Center. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. So is UConn going to win a national title again this year? I know we think every year last year they were, turns out, susceptible. Are they susceptible again this year? To me, it doesn't look like it yet. However, there are teams out there like Louisville, like Ohio State, like Notre Dame, who are so sick of seeing UConn grab that trophy, wear those rings, cut down the nets. And South Carolina certainly got their chance last season. And to see a new, a new queen in the world of, of women's college basketball was, I think, inspiring to a lot of other schools out there and a lot of other teams that said, hey, wow, it is possible. And what Mississippi State did, a little itty bitty hit the big shot to beat UConn, <laughs> end their winning streak. Everybody in women's college basketball said, whoa. The dragon can be slayed. I can't believe it. Manaya. But yeah, I do think they're going to win the national championship. You do, this okay. Year. With all that I do. said, well, I do. They're going to win their 30-plus games, and they're going to wind up back at the final four. It would certainly seem. You know how Wichita State plays angry. Imagine having that long of a streak—112 games, 111 games—and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, you don't get that ring to cap it off. I'd come back next year and play pretty angry. Yeah and start just another streak. Boy, Annette had a real nice second half. After a quiet first 20 minutes, the senior out of St. James School in Maryland is up to 14 points. He's given all kind of defensive looks tonight and shut South Carolina down in the paint. And to see him take the contact, and keep his concentration, finish the shot six blocks tonight to go along with 14 points. Wesley Myers. And this is Manaya. The Temple's defense still doing a good job of fronting the post. There's just no easy entry passes as Quentin Rose almost gets himself another steal. Boy, how many passes have been deflected by Temple defenders? And that's from playing up the line and looking to be active. That's a mindset. And South Carolina has just not been sharp passing the basketball tonight. Which is an easy example. Beatty right there could have put more pace on the ball. He could have given a bounce pass to the wing. But you see, you're surrounded by three white jerseys. It was more as if he was just giving it up to Manaya to say, hey, I have no options. Take it. And it looks like Rose will end his evening with a 24-point evening. Yeah, 24 oh, points. <laughs> the handshake? Yeah. It looked like it had a lot of steps to it. At 10 of 13, Brooke. Two of three, including that uh, pass. That was kind of a Derek Wittenberg <laughs> kind of pass shot the other way around. Derek's shot, of course, at the end of the NC State Championship. There was an air ball that turned into the winning bucket. Manaya off the steal. You know, the, the two positives I think you really could look at tonight for South Carolina, David Beatty in his game and Justin Manaya. Good guard play, good aggressiveness. All right, break down this handshake for us, bro. Okay, well, I'm just, I just want to count how many. I mean, we're at like five or six already. Look, at Josh is all in it. He knows what's going on. Quentin's cool, just like he hit that long three before. That's, that's, that is something you could ask me to do all season long to practice, and I guarantee you I'd still mess it up. So back at Coastal Carolina, you didn't have some <laughs> intricate handshake with your teammates? No way. No, we, we weren't that smart. We couldn't do that. Now, Quentin Rose feeling real good about himself and about his game is Temple. Already on its resume this year with a championship at the Charleston Classic, about to knock off a team that went to the Final Four this past March. And the handshake makes me think of what the Cavs do. I see LeBron going through with, with Kevin Love and everybody else on the team. Well, Kevin's is usually a pretty simple handshake, but everybody else is 
I mean, I'm thinking, how long does it take to figure out this routine? What do you, how, how do you even start? It's all beyond me. Yeah. No idea. I'm just not the cool kids anymore, I guess. I don't have it. No, I never was. Final 45 seconds at Madison Square Garden. This second annual Under Armour reunion. Seton Hall won the opener of this doubleheader. And Temple with a very impressive showing here tonight. Despite Justin Manaya now with 11 points, will pick up its fourth win of the year. J.P. Mormon misfires. And a foul called on the rebound. Well, from here, Temple's next game is on December 3rd. They will take on the George Washington Colonials in the BB&T Classic. Free throw made by Jason Cutt, a seven foot one inch freshman out of Myrtle Beach. You know a little bit about Myrtle Beach. You can find your way around. It's been a few years there. And I will be in South Carolina to call the game actually against Coastal Carolina. Battle of the national champions, you could say, really. I mean, it's in the state. Well, South Carolina will be off until December 2nd, a 2 o'clock tip against UMass. That'll be in Columbia. The long road trip for the Gamecocks comes to an end with a thud. They fall 76-60 to the Temple Owls. Now, yeah, South Carolina was hoping to redeem themselves from last year's loss to Seton Hall in this tournament. But Temple came out with a game plan, and they executed from start to finish. Fran Dumphy wanted the back line and the backdoor cuts open to blow up in the South Carolina defense. He got it. He got a lot from that guy right there. Quinton Rose, 24 points on 10 of 13 shooting. Yeah, now it's time to celebrate a little bit. You can smile, you can laugh. Game's over. You got the dub. Temple found itself trailing early 10 to 9 and then rattled off 11 straight points to take a 10 point lead 2010 and really never were challenged after that. South Carolina made a late push just before the intermission, but Temple, to their credit at both ends of the floor, never let the Gamecocks get back in it. Let's go back to Paul. He's with Temple head coach Fran Dunphy. Coach, defensively for you guys, Chris Silva from South Carolina, 26 points last game, five tonight. What was the point of emphasis on that side of the court? Well, we knew we had, he's, he's so active inside. We knew we had to do some things to try to help uh, our individual guarding. So we needed to uh, double down a few times. I thought our, our guards came down and scraped a little bit on him too. So that was terrific for us. On the side of your offense with Quentin Rose, I mean, 24 points, but the stat you're going to love is the one turnover. What impressed you the most about his game? Well, I think he understood. He, I mean, he was as disappointed as anybody was with his five turnovers the other day. So he gets it. He's a pretty intelligent guy, and he wanted to play much, much better, and I thought he did a really good job today. As a whole, after losing to LaSalle and then rebounding here tonight, what impressed you the most and what are you pleased with? Yeah, I think our defense was pretty good. I, that, that's the biggest thing. I think, we, I think we're going to be able to score, although they took us out of a lot of things we wanted to run tonight. But, but that's, that's what they do. That's how they, they handle their business. And so, uh, but defense is always the thing we've got to hang our hat on. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks. An impressive performance for Fran Dumphy's Temple Owls, led by number 13, Quentin Rose. His 24 points set the pace. For my partner, Brooke Weisbrod, and for Paul Carcaterra and our entire production crew at ESPN, I'm Doug Sherman. Thanks for joining us. Coming up next, College Football Live.